Good afternoon, I'm Norma. I'm so glad to be here with you this afternoon. And we're gonna have an exciting afternoon because I'm going to do some twists on some of your favorite foods. Uh, today, I am going to prepare some black eyed peas. Love, love, love black eyed peas and they're so good for you. Uh, I'm also gonna do collard greens, but collard greens probably like you've never had them before. And I'm also, going to do uh, butternut squash because squash is in big time right now and it's a great alternative if you have uh, if you're concerned about spiking your insulin levels you know with wonderful sweet potatoes uh, acorn I mean I'm sorry butternut squash is a very very good alternative and it's in season so it's I mean all of these things I know you're thinking I don't have that much time I've developed a very, very simple recipes, which I will also share with you, uh, but very simple recipes, and I am big time on eating. So we will be, uh, I will be preparing for you, but all of these uh, dishes that I'm preparing for you today can be prepared in 15 to 20 minutes or less. The only one that might take a little extra time and we would start like right away while we're cooking the other things would be the uh, butternut squash because we got to kind of slice that up and get it in the oven to kind of soften it. I mean the microwave, we actually, to speed up the time, we put it in the microwave to start it off really nicely. But uh, give you a little background about me, I am a vegan chef and no, I'm not promoting that you have to be a vegan. Uh, I'm just trying to give you some healthy alternatives that are tasty because I'm driven by taste and texture and my background a little background is that I, I'm from Louisiana so I really really know feel like I know uh, about good taste and textures uh, particularly as it relates to vegetables so um, I'm gonna give you some new ideas some things that you can try out at home and you can try it with your guests because we the holidays are coming up and you can try it at home so why well, I said at home already but anyway, uh, let's move on because uh, the history, our history says that, you know, we, food is big time with us. And that's what I was given is that they said, we want you to tell them about ways that they can eat, you know, the things they enjoy, but maybe give it a little healthier twist. Now, one of the things I'm going to show you before we even start is a plate. <laughs> and this plate, and you might guess what these already mean is uh, this is what your plate should look like in terms of when it's filled with food, you know, and hopefully your favorite foods. So the V stands, of course, for vegetables. Uh, half of your plate or more should be full of whatever your favorite vegetables are. Uh, grains, G is for grains, and that grains, I want you to start thinking about using different grains. We all know rice, and hopefully you're using, you shifted off to brown rice by now, uh, but uh, rice, it can be uh, even whole grain pasta, uh, but you can see that's a much smaller portion here. And then P for protein. And your proteins would be uh, your chicken, your fish, your red meats. Uh, and once again, I'm gonna hope that you're kind of shifting more toward the lighter meats, uh, proteins, which would be your chicken and fish. You know, you can still have the red ones, but just try to use those or have those uh, a little less often. Uh, in terms of grains, I want you to think about things like farro, and we can talk about that later because we're going to have this demo here of a cooking demonstration, but I'm also going to come on live uh, for about 15 minutes where you can actually give me questions, hopefully. So start thinking about questions that you have and maybe even jot them down while I'm cooking or preparing or I'm talking to you. Uh, but your grains, some grains like farro, and you may already be familiar with that, uh, quinoa. Um, so those are two that are really, really high in protein. And yes, grains have protein. Uh, so you want to start thinking about maybe incorporating some of those versus, you know, your rice or your uh, pasta. So let's get started. So we're going to start with our black eyed peas. Now one of the things, and I brought this package, is most people, I, I understand that a lot of people are still eating or using dried beans. Now they're a little less expensive, but they are dried 
and when they dry them out you lose some of the nutrients and this is a reason that you have to I call it soak them back to life because <laughs> I actually have a friend and he said to me you know I soak my beans overnight and then you have to clean them because there's grit and there's rocks in them and anyway that's really kind of old 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 way of doing it go to your local grocer hopefully they have it if they don't take a picture of this these are fresh beans and these are fresh black eyed peas. These can be prepared in 15 to 20 minutes versus hours, days before soaking them and then hours of cooking them. And I'm going to show you today how to do that. But these are our fresh black eyed peas. There's also fresh black beans now. There's fresh chickpeas. So these are found in your produce section of your um, grocery store. So we're going to move on our, to our black eyed peas. So our black eyed peas, um, we're going to start with our black eyed peas and you're going to get a saucepan, here's mine, and your saucepan, you want to put your black eyed peas in first. I put my black eyed peas in first and you want to put about this much water, not a lot of water over those black eyed peas because what we're going to do is we want that water to boil down and we're going to make our black eyed pea gravy inside with our black eyed peas. Um, so also onions and I prefer 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 sweet onions and so it actually says on it and there is a difference in the flavor if you like sweet which I do uh, you want a sweet onion it has a, a much I think a milder flavor and anyway I just prefer them so I am going to saute what you want to do and I've already done it is uh, you can see is I sauteed my uh, sweet onion and also garlic, fresh, fresh garlic. Try to use fresh whenever possible. And I used a couple of gloves, glo gloves, cloves of fresh garlic and chopped them in and sauteed those in a separate saucepan. And one of the things I want to talk to you today about also uh, is oils. Your oils make a difference and you might think, no, not really. And you're probably, you know, you probably, I don't, I'm not sure what you're using. You may be using canola oil or corn oil and hopefully not a lard. <laughs> I know it has a lot of flavor, but it has a lot of uh, things that uh, don't go well with our body, particularly in our bloodstream. So one of the things I want you to think about or consider if you already have them, if you don't consider coconut oil and olive oil, virgin olive oil. These are amazing. Your body loves, loves, loves these oils. And uh, a friend of mine said, you know, well, isn't coconut oil, I've heard mixed reviews about coconut oil not being good for you. Coconut oil is amazing for you. Not only can you use it on your skin, but it helps to actually raise the good cholesterol, HDL, and it helps to burn fat and who doesn't need to burn fat? So it actually helps to burn fat. So this is an amazing oil. If you don't have it, uh, you wanna consider having it. And there was one more thing, <gasps> boosting heart health. So we wanna do that. So consider getting coconut oil and these are the two oils that I will be using today for everything is our coconut oil and olive oil. So what you would do is put your uh, peas, your fresh peas in your pan, cover it with about this much water and boil. And you say, well, don't you want to add salt? You can add a little salt. And when I say little, I want you to, uh, I keep telling you, I want you to, I would encourage you, I suggest uh, that you start to use um, uh, salt, but use it and actually put it in a small dish. This way you'll use less. It's really hard to measure when you're shaking salt out. So I like to put it in a small dish and I'll take a pinch and literally a pinch of salt and I sprinkle it in. Now this will help the water uh, to boil faster because um, contrary to the way a lot of times, you know, people think salt is bad for you, it's only bad if you use too much of it. So what you want to do is think about or start to rethink the way that you use your salt and think of it as a flavor enhancer, but not, you don't want to taste the flavor of the salt because that will cover up the wonderful flavor of what you're preparing. So a little salt, you're going to let that come to a boil and it'll come to a boil probably in about five, five minutes and you 
let it come to a boil without the top on. Once it comes to a boil, put the top on, let it boil for about another five minutes, and then you're gonna take the top off. And this is something you've probably never done, is you're gonna use a potato masher, and you're gonna start to mash your beans. And as you mash those beans, it's gonna create a gravy. And this is what you want. You don't wanna mash all of them, just enough that the water starts to turn this kind of tannish gray brown color because that's your gravy and now you're not going to lose any of your nutrients and it's going to give it's going to enhance the flavor of your beans your peas so much better so once you do that then you're going to put your top back on actually one of my go-to spices is spike and the reason i love spike is because you can buy it anywhere and it is delicious and it's a combination of a lot of different uh, flavors, celery, uh, but it's you, once you start using you'll never go back to using anything else. Allspice has nothing, nothing compares with Spike. And you can also get the what they call the low sodium version or no sodium light, but Spike, so you're going to put a little Spike into your uh, peas. Now they're still cooking, you're going to put a little Spike and of course I like spice, so I'm going to use red cayenne pepper. So I'm going to sprinkle a little red cayenne pepper, and we have already put a little salt in, and I'm going to stir and mash this again. And I don't know if you can see, but it's already starting to see, you can start to see it's starting to get a little thick, because that's what we want. We don't want it thin and watery. We want it to have a little thickness, but we want that flavor. By mashing, uh, the peas after you put the uh, after you put the uh, spices in it kind of blends it it's almost like mixing it really mixing it into the peas so uh, when we finish it should look like it should look like this okay so now and that's taken us we were really if we were doing this real time that would take us about 15 or 20 minutes now beforehand we've already sauteed our onions so these are onions and we sauteed those onions because we know almost everything we use we're going to use some onions and garlic so we've sauteed our onions and garlic now we're going to come over and actually put some of the onions and garlic into it uh oops <laughs> Here we go. Into our peas, we're gonna stir that up, mix it in nicely, and we're done. This is this is done. Now we can move on. Now the next thing we're I'm gonna show you is our collard greens. Amazing. So these have already been washed. You want to make sure you wash them, and you're going to roll them. You're gonna take the whole leaf and roll that leaf together, and then you're just gonna start slicing. Now while I'm doing this, I'm gonna turn on, I put a little, remember I said oil, oh, I forgot one thing. Don't wanna forget this, because this is gonna to add to the creaminess. You wanna take your coconut oil. Coconut oil is what I use in my black eyed peas, and that's what gives it such a neat, unique flavor. And my friend said, what's in these peas? It's the coconut oil. So you're gonna take about a teaspoon, a half a teaspoon, of coconut oil and you're going to add this in to your peas at the end and just stir it around and you're going to flavor is like amazing and so now that's done but this is all in a recipe you don't have to write anything down now uh, we're going to turn on oops i've got it on already okay we're going to turn on our skillet uh, because we're going to saute our collard greens so we're going to roll these up and just start, and you want small, I would say maybe about a half an inch, because you, collard greens are very, very fibrous. They're like amazingly nutritious, but they're also very fibrous, and most people think you have to boil them and boil them until they're dead. Die, vegetable, die. <laughs> so that's not what we're trying to do here. So we're gonna slice these up, and then usually what I do is I turn my cutting board around and then I go down the middle because now this helps them to be in more of a bite size uh, as opposed to 
needing a knife and a fork to eat your greens. I mean, you need a fork, <laughs> but not a knife. Here you go. Okay, so now our oil is heated up nicely. This is olive oil. This one, coconut oil for your black eyed peas, olive oil for your greens. And you want to make sure also uh, that you towel dry your greens so that the oil doesn't start to splatter. <laughs> there we go. So we've got all our greens in and we're going to actually start to, because we're not frying them, remember not a lot of oil, we want to be light on our oil because we're not deep frying our greens, we're sauteing them. So now we're going to start to stir around, just moving this around because we want to make sure that they all get, all of the greens get a light coating of olive oil. And once you have that, it's nice and coated. Then I want you to take, da 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 da, spike. And we're going to sprinkle a little spike and red pepper. <laughs> I'm sorry, you got to use red pepper. It's excellent also for your blood. Here we go. They consider red pepper a blood uh, purifier. So if you like spicy things, that's a good thing. And of course our salt. Remember, we're only going to use a pinch because we're watching our salt and we only want it to enhance the flavor, not to overpower it. And I use two pinches here because we got a lot of greens here. And that's it. And now we're going to stir that all up. Make sure it's nice and mixed. Turn that heat down because we're not frying them, we're just sauteing. And you can see how quickly they're starting to come down. Come down meaning that they're actually starting to cook. Here we go. So now we're going to take this and there you go. So it's almost like now we're, we sauteed them, we've got them flavored, and we're going to let the steam just kind of cook them down just a little bit. So we're not going, the beauty of this, of sauteing the greens, is that you don't lose. First of all, you're going to have a much, much richer flavor, and you don't lose any nutrients. When you boil your greens, you're literally boiling all the nutrients out. And even though you eat the greens and you think, oh, I eat a lot of greens, I'm really healthy, you're really not getting, I would say you might get a third or a fourth of the nutrients. All the nutrients are in the water and that's generally what people throw out. You know, unless some people actually drink it, but uh, it's this is a much, much healthier, more delicious, quicker way to actually include more greens in your diet. So now this has been maybe about less than five minutes. That's why I said I'm really, really good on getting amazing meals to the table. I always say that's my claim to fame in 15 minutes or less. So we're going to take this off. We're going to stir and you can see there's no oil in the bottom of the pan because of course we're just sauteing and not trying to deep fry. And you can see how quickly they've already started to wilt. And that's what we want because when they're wilted, that means they're going to be easy for you to chew, easy for your body to digest. And they're gonna be delicious. So, hopefully you're still with me. <laughs> so now we can add, we have one more thing to add, remember? Because we like onions. So we're going to add, here's our onions, our onions and garlic. Because what would greens be without onions and garlic? Bland. <laughs> so we're gonna put our little onions and garlic. Uh, let's see. And as you can see, you've got onions, garlic. Oh, you're already, your mouth is already watering, right? <laughs> and you can see they're just about ready. So we put a stir in our onions, our garlic. We're gonna put our top back on here. I've got a little pop quiz for you, okay? These are, of course, bell peppers. One is ripe and one is not ripe. Which one do you think is the ripe bell pepper? If you said red, you're right. The red bell pepper, these are actually, it's not different versions. It's just, this one was picked when it was not ripe. 
this one was picked when it's ripe. So a red bell pepper is actually a green bell pepper when it's ripe. And this is why the flavor is different. Uh, the green bell pepper has a little more bite to it uh, in terms of it's a little, um, I think almost a little more bitter. And red bell peppers tend to be very sweet. And that's because it's the ripe one. So this is it. Your green and red, I just thought I'd throw that in as a fun fact to know. Um, so our, we're going to let this finish. We're going to turn it off because we don't want to ever overcook our veggies because uh, then it won't have any texture to it. And I told you, uh, as far as I'm concerned, food is all about taste and texture. Uh, so now we're going to move on to our butternut squash. And this is when you look in the gro I mean when you're in the grocery store and you like you've probably had butternut squash but didn't know what it looked like, this is it. And there's so many squashes in season, so that's why I wanted to make sure I talked about this and gave you an amazing easy recipe. So this one says butternut squash. We're gonna take our label off and then I'm gonna show you how to prepare this. We're gonna start to just kind of slice this watch your hands. Uh, and very, very thin because it's the outer shell. Actually, let me cut this off first. Okay, we're going to cut off the ends because we're not going to eat that. Uh, and there's two ends here. So, and you want to try to get it as close to the edge as possible. Be careful. You have to maybe do a little sawing here. <laughs> and get that bottom off. Now you see seeds, but the seeds are not in the entire squash. The seeds are only in the bottom part, and most of the meat is actually all in this top part. So you, when you're selecting one, you want to get one with a long, I call it a long tower, a long top on it. So now we've cut off the bottom, and we're going to make some slits. Oops. Before we make, you know what? We'll make the slits here, right on the outside. So you're going to make the slits. And so we're actually going to put this in the microwave. This one requires a little more preparation, not a lot. And you're gonna put some slits and then we're gonna take this whole thing and just put it in the microwave. We're gonna put it in the microwave for five minutes. Now, while that's cooking, when it comes out, it'll be softer and it'll be easier for you to carve off the outside. And as you can see, I have some here and this is much easier now. It's not cooked, it's not ready to eat but it's easier for you to peel. So now we're gonna peel off the outside. And this is what I was telling you about that bottom base. There's a lot of seeds. And um, I mean, you, you can still use it, but it, you can see there's gonna be a lot of waste here. Now this is your squash. Oops, I still left some skin on there. I'm gonna make sure you get all that skin off because that's gonna be really tough terms of it will not cook. So we're going to move that over and then you're just going to slice. And you want to cube this. So you make some nice long diagonals and then take it to the side and make nice cubes. So see you have some nice cubes of squash. Oops, we want to take some of this membrane out. It reminds me of a uh, pumpkin <laughs> where you don't want to eat that uh, membrane part of it. So you want to make sure all of that's removed. And by the way, the membrane doesn't exist in the upper part, in that tower part. So that's why I said that's really where your value is in terms of getting as much uh, butternut squash, edible butternut squash as possible. So here we go. And you're going to put them in for approximately 25 minutes, 25 to 30 minutes. So you want to do that first. So before you start your peas, before you start your greens, and that way when these are already done, you'll be pulling this out and you'll be ready to sit and uh, eat your meal. And this is our butternut squash. When it's actually cooked, we're going to put it in our bowl. So here's our, at 425 for about 25 minutes, our butternut squash and then we're going to sprinkle this is nutmeg now someone said you can use uh, can you use cinnamon absolutely you can use cinnamon and then i stir that make it make sure try to get everything coated and pure maple syrup not 
that simulated stuff. It costs a little more, but you actually will use less of it. And this is up from the trees, so there's no added sugar. Uh, so if you're diabetic, you have to be careful, ask your doctor about it, but this is delicious if you can use it. So you're going to use just a little and you're going to drizzle very, very lightly. Remember I said less is better when it comes to adding flavors to your food. So we're going to add a, just a little maple syrup and now we're going to toss. We're going to toss our butternut squash and our maple syrup and let's see. Mmm delicious. <laughs> no meal is complete without dessert. <laughs> but you can have great desserts. Great desserts meaning things that are delicious, they're tasty, but they're good for you. And you want to try as much as possible to eat foods that are in season. And right now our raspberries and especially blackberries are in season. So you have your blackberries, I think blueberries are as well. But I'm going to use uh, blackberries and raspberries delicious dessert yogurt and you can use any kind that you like because yogurt's delicious and it's very very good for you try to use an unsweetened version if you have any issues uh, in terms of diabetes or pre-diabetic so you're going to use just a i use a, just a simple serving one serving oh, i love this <laughs> uh, simple serving of uh, this one is raspberry so I'm going to put the raspberry yogurt, and look how quick this is. Raspberry yogurt, and I've already cleaned my, rinsed my uh, blackberries off. I'm going to put, toss a few blackberries here, or how much you think you'll eat, <laughs> and some raspberries. So now we have the raspberry yogurt, fresh raspberries. And you put a few fresh raspberries. And now I like chocolate. So I can get my chocolate fix. Here we go. Handful, handful of chocolate. And I'm going to drizzle those on top of my yogurt. And one more thing is I like uh, texture. Remember I talked about texture? So I want some nuts. And I'm looking for where I have my nuts. But I would sprinkle them with nuts and we'll come over here and I'll show you I'll show you our meal and this is our finished version of I call this our little tropical delight because we have our um, raspberries our blackberries our uh, raspberry yogurt some dark chocolate uh, chips and uh, pecans um, our meal this is our meal and this is a meatless meal and you can add you know meat to it or protein but this is actually your protein and this is your um, would be considered you could use this like a grain but it's actually your squash delicious very very good for you and our sauteed collard greens bon appetit